Oh my gosh. Hey, I am a nervous wreck right now. <laughs> well, here we go. I just wanted to try something new and different and let everybody see what, um, what I do every day in the morning to do my little morning wake ups, um, exercises with water coloring. And I am super excited, but I'm also a tad bit nervous, needless to say. So, um, I posted, I did a couple of posts about supplies in the event that you would like to follow along with me, or if you just want to enjoy watching the whole process unfold, that's cool too. And, um, but if you did want to join along with me and paint similar to what I am doing, or at least the same content, but in your own style, I think that's super cool. Use whatever products you would like to use. I'm going to be using different types of mostly watercolor materials, but also those acrylic inks I've mentioned. But if you want to do all acrylics, if you want to do oils, if you want to do pastels, if you just want to use a pencil, super cool. Um, I just would love to see what you end up making if you try to follow along. So anyway, it is a beautiful day outside and I'm excited to get started. I got my jazz music in the background, a little Hannah Nola for you. Every morning, pretty much, I also have a tendency to start by lighting some incense. Um, and other than that, I'm ready to go. I got my stuff going and I'm good to go. So I'm gonna talk you through the process that I use. I like to find a photograph, especially when I'm painting flowers. I love flowers and I especially love orchids and um, tropical plants. So I usually will try to find a um, photograph that I like and that, in, that inspires me or use plants that I have around my house. So for this case, I'm gonna show you the photograph that I'm gonna be working with. And then I'm gonna put my camera in this handy little gooseneck camera holder and we'll get started and I'll show you the supplies that I'm gonna use first so people can kind of gather their thoughts and kind of see what we're going for. So let's get started. Okay, this is the photograph that I will be, uh, the, of the orchid that I'm going to be attempting to do my version of. Um, there is, there we go. That's a better shot of it. So this is the photograph that I'm going to be using. And um, this really quick is some of the supplies that I'll be using. And I'll go ahead and get us started. So just FYI, none of this is going to be foolproof because, again, this is my first time doing this. So y'all are going to have to bear with me if you don't mind while I figure some of this out while y'all figure it out too. And um, hopefully we can learn together. I actually chose watercolors because it's not my typical medium that I use. I've been forced to explore this medium a little bit more because of quarantine. And uh, normally I'm a messy painter and I use larger canvases and a lot of water and I, um, I can't do that at home obviously or it would make a super huge mess. So I've been doing my watercoloring instead. Um, I've mentioned several times on the post that I love watercolor pencils, which I have some examples of the most common ones that I, the colors that I use right here um, and the different brands that I like to use. I've also mentioned about being able to use different papers. So this is a mixed media pad. I'm not gonna use that today. I'm gonna use a watercolor paper pad, but you can use mixed media. You can use computer paper. It's just gonna get really wet and kind of flimsy, but really it's best to use either mixed media or some sort of watercolor paper. So I've mentioned this one before too. I really like this brand. It's 100% cotton. I have now figured out that when it says um, the, uh, the rough texture, that is what you want to go for, and for me at least. And then the hot pressed is, um, makes it smooth. The, the paper's really smooth. I'm actually going to use this rough textured one because I really like the way that it takes the watercolor pencils especially. So I've already pulled a piece off. They're usually glued at one side and um, loose on the other side, unless you happen to buy a block. In case you ever see that, like in an art material supply store, a block is actually glued around all the sides and you have to shove, except one, there's usually a little notch in there, that you have to shove a pallet knife in and drag it around to, un to release that top piece of paper off your block of uh, watercolor. But these guys are just pads, so one side is glued, the other three sides are not. Um, yesterday when I did the orchid that I painted yesterday, 
I want it to be a very specific side, so I taped size, so I taped off with this blue painter's tape. And um, it is, it's a safe release tape, and so you can put it on to block off exactly the dimensions that you want, and then take it off to release it, it peels off really easily. Um, that's a really good product to have in your, uh, in your repertoire of options. Um, meanwhile, incidentally, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask. If you need me to slow down, please let me know. I have a tendency to talk fast. I also have a tendency to work kind of fast because number one, I'm not super patient with these things. And number two, um, I do that on purpose because if I go too slow, then I'm going to um, start to knit up on, on what I'm working on. And sometimes when you knit up on things, especially with watercolor, it has a tendency to get really muddled and really messy. And so I try to um, go fast, but also slow myself down enough that I don't turn it into a hot mess. Watercolor, incidentally, in my opinion, is not super forgiving because you can make a, make it into a mess so easily. And you also um, can uh, mess up your paper pretty fast. It starts to like roll off almost when you like try to wipe with paper towel on something. It starts to do that if you start messing with it too much. So, um, okay, hopefully anyone who, who is wanting to paint along has your things ready. Again, this is the orchid, or at least my version of this orchid that I'm going to be going for, and I'm just using it as some sort of inspiration. I love the blue and white, like chintz pots, and then um, I really like how these leaves are placed, and I like that it's just one stalk of flower, and I like that there are a few buds at the end. So the first thing that I start to observe is if you can see where there's like a little lime green section on this leaf in particular, there's a little lime green section that's kind of a funky shape. I try to pay attention to those types of things when I'm drawing. And that way it kind of leads me to some natural highlighting for when I start to fill in with my colors. Um, this moss stuff, I have a really hard time with with watercolor. So I usually end up improvising somehow, which we'll kind of see how this one evolves. <laughs> but um, I usually improvise somehow with that. So, okay, I'm gonna get started. I um, usually, I have found that works best is to do my sketching with at least one of the colors in whatever it is that I'm sketching. So in this case, I start with the leaves and I'm gonna use one of my greens because um, I used to use just pencils, but then I find that if I make a mistake, I keep on drawing more lines and I end up with a whole bunch of pencil marks. So not super crazy about the way that looks in the end. So now what I do is I sketch with my watercolor pencils instead. And then um, as you'll see, as we progress, once you wet them, you can make that line disappear if you don't really like that color or if you don't like the shape or sometimes it just adds another dimension because a lot of plants have veining in their leaves anyway. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna draw my, um, my flat my leaves first and uh, y'all bear with me again because um, I'm drawing at the same time as trying to talk and being one that is not the best at walking and chewing gum although I consider myself to be pretty coordinated I uh, am trying to not only draw but also talk about what I'm drawing which is kind of a funny experience this whole thing is a very funny experience for me so I am, uh, okay, I'm drawing my leaves like so. Again, if you're, if you're following along with me, I, I, I'm looking at the picture, but I'm also doing my own version because if I attempt to draw this actual thing, I'm never gonna be satisfied and it's gonna frustrate me so much, which becomes really discouraging and then you wanna give up on the product and so on and so forth. So I pretty much, I'm just using it as a guide for myself and I don't really like to be too restrictive once I'm gonna have this sketched out. Honestly, I usually put it away because from there, I just try to go off of my memory and what jumped out at me and if it's not exactly right, it doesn't matter. It's what makes you feel happy about what you're working on and it's what makes you feel happy in the end. Really, it doesn't matter because probably out there somewhere, there's an orchid in the wildlife that looks exactly like the one that you tried to make look like that 
and somewhere out there in nature there's a happy little orchid because you were pleased with the way it looked and now you have your own drawn version so just kind of go with it but like i said i just mostly am going for the shapes of things but do you see how how this line connects right here so as i'm sketching it you have to see where that connects because the leaf actually flips over and so you are gonna we're gonna color one part darker than the other color i mean than the other part okay so you want to just sketch out all of your things and y'all mind you i did not go to art school so again i am 100 percent certain that um, if you went to art school and you were a painting major or an illustration major or you're amazing with drawing with pencils that I'm probably gonna really frustrate you because I do very, very unorthodox painting. But you know what? It makes it fun. And not everybody gets to go to art school, but there's a lot of people who really want to explore the art avenue. And so I say go for it. It doesn't matter if you didn't go to art school. Just do your thing because that's what makes it fun. See, like I'm doing my own thing right there because that leaf, I didn't quite sketch it. I didn't quite sketch that upper leaf properly. So I just kind of added my own thing there. I'm not gonna stress about it. Um, the other thing is this orchid has a really long stem. It's flowers on a super long stem. I got really excited about my leaves and I made them a little big. So instead mine's gonna just have a short stem, but I'm not gonna stress about it. Again, it's becoming my own now and that's what's most important. And it's gonna make, it's just gonna make me happy for it to be exactly the way that it is. Okay, so just drawing. If you're, if you're just watching again and you're not painting and you wanna come back later just to see the finished product, I get it. <laughs> but those of you that are painting, just keep on doing your best to uh, make your own rendition of, of either what I'm doing or of your own version. Um, again, any, any feedback is very, very welcome because uh, Preferably the good feedback though, by the way, <laughs> because because um, this is brand new for me. So I don't really, I've never done this before. Um, the flowers are white. As you can see, I love white orchid flowers, but the flowers are white. Well, the problem is, is I'm painting on white paper. And so for me, the way that I like to highlight that white is by using a yellow pencil. And I actually end up using yellow paint first. And then I, um, and then I use a uh, white acrylic paint on top of my watercolor paint, and then I come back with more watercolor pe pencils. So someone just asked about what is my favorite um, brand of watercolor pencils. Uh, I really like, I, it's, it seems to be that I grab my Faber-Castell pencils the most, but I love, it's, I'm probably gonna slaughter the name, but it's Karen, Karen Deosh. I love that brand. It's that uh, C-A-R-A-N D apostrophe A-C-H-E. And if you look at previous posts when I did these videos, I mentioned or tagged all of these pencil brands, but it just so happens that a lot of times I end up grabbing um, the Faber Castle. And I don't know if that's because I have more colors of theirs or if, it, I, I'm not sure why, but I really like, um, Faber Castell, Caran uh, and Derwent are probably my three most favorite colored pencils, all for various reasons. Um, so, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and sketch out my little flowers now. And again, they've got like three or four flowers, five flowers on here. I'm not going to fit all that because I got excited about my leaves, like I said. But I'm just going to go ahead and um, do my own, my own little thing as far as my flowers go. And um, these orchids have really kind of funny shaped, almost butterfly leaf, little, uh, little petals. And so you just kind of do draw it, sketch out. I'm gonna have um, two flowers that are, that are head on. And then I'm going to do a, a flower that's sideways. And so again, let me know if there's anything that you need me to do or explain more, I'm happy to do so. Uh, and these, again, these are just my sketch marks. So I can adjust accordingly as I'm painting because I might change my mind about something. And that's cool, just do your thing. So there are my 
flowers. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of a stem to, um, to, to a few of them, the little, the little stem that comes off of, uh, that joins the flower to the stalk itself, to the stem itself. Um, okay, so now for my pot, um, the, you know, the container can be a little bit tricky sometimes because you have to make it, or you don't have to do anything. You can do it whatever you want. If you do it like very um, abstract and more modern, you don't need to worry about trying to make it be, show everybody that this is a nice little round pot. It can just be a block if you want to. Just, again, do your thing, make it yours, however you enjoy doing it. But for me, I have a tendency to kind of end up somewhere in between, but this is uh this top part if you're trying to make a round vessel to show that it's round and not just a block you want to make this corner super sharp do you see in this drawing in this photograph i mean it kind of comes to a pretty severe point right there and right there and so you want to you want to mimic that right here in my case i had my leaf cover cover the um the top of the pot so because this is where my lip is again if you see right here there's a little bit more overhang than the pot is so you want to come just to the inside of your overhang and come on down my pot's going to fall off the page again because i got excited about my leaves um but i'm going to make it so that it's coming off the page and i'm not going to actually have to worry about rounding the bottom the way that it shows so that again so you can see it's a round vessel but uh, but I definitely do a little bit of an angle in. I also don't worry about the fact that this angle is at a different angle than that angle coming in on the sides. Because again, make it your own, make it fun. And the fact is, is that if you, um, I believe in, in uh, forcing my art to be forgiving. So if I, I, once upon a time when I owned a stationery company, I designed everything on the computer and you can make perfect circles when you're on the computer. When you try to paint a perfect circle, you're gonna end up with an enormous circle on your page nine times out of 10 because you keep on finding a spot that's not exactly round or one side of your circle is a little off from the other side of your circle. So, so you, um, you just, I, I, what I find is I embrace that imperfection and I make it intentional because there's so few things that are perfect anyway um, that I just try to embrace the fact that I'm going to have a really hard time making something perfect. So just, just make it your own. So the fact that this angle is different than that angle, not even going to stress about it. It might come together in the end and end up being completely balanced, but not going to stress about it. Okay. So what, so here's my pot and, um, I wanted to do a couple little swirly gigs in here just, kind of, just for interest. Sorry, that would be my dog. Um, probably like an Amazon delivery or something like that. So I'm just gonna do a couple of squiggles in here just to kind of have some visual interest and um, and then uh, fill them in after with the color that I want. Okay, so let me do that. And then I've mentioned uh, lots of times that I love, or, or hashtag a couple of times, that I love this brand, this green leaf and blueberry brand. It, they're fantastic. They're handmade in Colorado. They're beautiful, beautiful watercolors. Um, they're a little bit pricey, but they are fantastic. Uh, one day, maybe I'll do a little video on how they differ from others. But um, yeah, they're they're a treat, I will tell you. So um, one of my favorite colors that they have is this green earth. And I just, it, it's extremely transparent actually. So you have to kind of load up your brush with a whole bunch of it. And I'm just gonna paint the, um, paint the bottom parts of these leaves. Um, again, I've put my picture away now because if I try to mimic that photograph too much, I'm gonna just frustrate myself a lot. So, uh, and, and this being the beginning stages, you just kind of want to do your thing. If it, um, if the water pools, that's okay because when it dries, it adds a really, really natural texture that is, uh, you know, that you almost kind of can't make happen on purpose. So it's beautiful when it happens on its own. Um, but anyway, 
So still, still using the green earth, mostly for the undersides. My, uh, my watercolor pencils are getting wet, and so what's really nice is as they get wet, there's some of this lime green that ends up showing up, and that's just from, uh, from me applying the, the green earth color. So, and because I'm working with green, I go ahead and continue with green. I'm gonna add in some of this Mayan green, which is a beautiful color. It's very, very, um, like, almost teal, tealish color. There's a lot of blue in it, um, and, but it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful green. And you can't, like, I couldn't get that from any of my other um, watercolors but that one, sure, they, they hit it, nail, hit the nail on the head with that color. It's so pretty. So I'm putting that on. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, is, I'm just curious, are, are there any people joining with the actual painting part? Or are we uh, just watching? Either way is totally fine. I just wanna make sure that I'm going Fast enough, if you're just watching, I can just kind of paint faster and talk while I'm painting, although I might say crazy stuff, but you know. Um, but if you're actually painting with me, I wanna make sure that if you have any questions or that I'm going slow enough or any of that, that you know, I'm accommodating your needs also because I know that I don't want it to be frustrating that you can't keep up, but yet you're trying to watch what I'm doing at the same time. You have some opinion. Okay, so there are, um, a few people painting or at least I don't want to be going too fast for that person so um, again if you're just observing and you want to come back later to see the finished product feel free if you want to sit and watch me do it I would love it if you want to um, watch and make comments I would uh, love that too any feedback would be awesome so these buds up here to me from what I remember they actually have a lot of yellow in them. So in addition to that green earth that I'm incorporating in these places, I'm actually gonna go ahead and put a little touch of this Mayan yellow on that color palette because it um, it, it adds the proper uh, shade of green that I want. Um, and, and also keep this in mind, after, uh, sometimes I put this in my little quick videos, but sometimes I don't. I, after I've painted everything, I usually come back and do really quick little highlights of, um, with a more colored pencil because sometimes um, I feel like there needs to be more depth or just more whatever. So I, um, so again, just remember when something is in process, don't judge yourself. Don't judge what you're working on. Don't judge the piece yet because there's so much potential. I can't tell you how many times I'm working on something and I wanna give up on it. And, and then I just keep pushing through because I'm like, no, there's still something there. I can still feel it. And um, just keep pushing through because something will evolve and or you'll make a change and all of a sudden you're like, yeah, that's it. That's exactly it. And so don't, don't give up on it because there's all, nine times out of 10 something there. Okay, so this blob that I just did, I'm not super keen on that, so I'm gonna kind of stretch that out. But you have to, again, you have to be super careful with watercolors because you will start tearing up your paper. Okay, so that's my, uh, my leaves. I'm gonna leave those be for a little bit. No pun intended, but I'm gonna leave those be. Um, and I'm gonna do my flowers right now. This yellow ochre paint that I'm using, okay, so a little bit of the Mayan green got in there. Again, not gonna worry about it but because I'm gonna end up covering those up with a lot of white anyway. But um, again, I like to put yellow in the background first, like some sort of a yellow ochre in the background. Uh, yellow ochre, incidentally, if you're not using uh, watercolors that have the names labeled, their um, yellow ochre is a very, very like brownish yellow. It's, got a, it's, it's kind of burnt looking. It's very orangey, I should say. Um, it's kind of burnt looking almost and um but i love the whole family of ochre colors and this green leaf and blueberry brand um of watercolors they actually have a whole uh series of ochre colors but there's like purple ochre and red ochre and different colors of ochre as the base 
And so they, um, I just like that whole ochre family because it's really, it's very rich, but yet subdued at the same time. It's, it's just a beautiful, a beautiful paint line. Okay, so um, because I'm uh, not a traditional watercolorist, a lot of watercolorists would, um, you know, want to leave certain things at certain spots, but for whatever reason, I like to take it a little bit further. And so um, some, some people would be totally fine with it being just like this. I, I feel like I need to still do something about the leaves and whatnot, which I will. Um, but, and then the pot, of course. Some people like to just leave the whole background white and don't put anything in the background as far as color goes. Um, I've, I go back and forth with it. It depends on what I'm looking for. But um, I go back and forth with it. So this is it so far. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of color for on the pots. Again, the same green leaf and blueberry. They've, um, they've got this color called um, Vivianite and um, it's kind of a very, very gray blue, but I like it. And then they have a Mayan blue too, which um, I'm being specific because they, they've got so many different colors that they make now. And um, so they have different shades of Mayan blue. One of, this is the two that I'm gonna be using in a minute. This is still that uh, Viviante, or however you say it, uh, Vivianite, Vivianite, sorry. <laughs> Yes. What, where do you buy your supplies? Okay, a lot, um, okay, somebody just asked where do I buy my supplies? Well, a lot of, um, a lo we live in a what's considered a rural area in Florida, and so we have a Michaels. It takes about 20 minutes to get there. It takes, you know, we, Hobby Lobby's like 40 minutes away, so on and so forth. So I end up ordering a lot of my things online, and I have found most success with Dick Blick, um, and that's dickblick.com. I feel like their website's pretty easy to navigate. Um, I, my daughter goes to SCAD in Savannah and they are so lucky to have a local Dick Blick, which is amazing. And um, so when, when we go visit her, I always go to Dick Blick when I'm there because there are things that you'll, you kind of have to know what you're looking for, obviously, when you go online to buy. But um, when you're in one of their stores, there are things that you'll discover that, that you didn't know existed, which is fantastic. So yeah, I mostly buy from Dick Blick. Um, but like I said, this green leaf and blueberry, they actually, you have to buy direct from them. And they have a website. Uh, I've been checking it out because there's a few colors that I want. And they are, um, their, their whole uh, retail sales is kind of shut down right now because they said they've been so busy filling orders, which I'm so happy for them because it's this amazing little couple she's an artist he was a chemist and they um they saw a, a spot in the market that wasn't filled and they started making their own um watercolor paints and they use all like natural hand ground up products okay so i'm just gonna um you have a question of what brand of brushes and the number and shape well are you working with that's kind of a funny question because, like I said, I'm not really um, a, 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 I'm more of an artist based off of practice than formality. And so I end up um, honestly grabbing pretty much whatever I want. Like this one is a, um, an angle brush and it's just simply Simmons. I don't know. I think the one that I first started out with the leaves, I think it's just from Michaels and it's a half inch. These guys I really love. Um, they're from St. Luke Studio, and they're and this is a number seven, and I believe it's just considered a round brush. Um, uh, they make beautiful products, and I actually discovered them when I took an um, an encost uh, no uh, 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 iconography class where you painted icons, which are beautiful. But the number four and two of their uh, like I said, I believe those are round brushes. That's at St. Luke Studio. And um, the number four and two are the ones that I like the most of that. Then I really, really dig this brush. It's a, um, it's Princeton actually, and it's a long round and it's the number 12 Elite and it's specifically for watercolor. It just works super great. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. I love that one a lot. Um, but honestly, I use whatever I grab. <laughs> 
which I'm sure is would drive some people crazy, but it's what I do. Okay, so I have this um, these colors on my pot. I just want to add a little bit more of this kind of French blue again that uh, Green Leaf and Blueberry makes. It's um, it's their Mayan blue number two. Incidentally, I am not. I don't receive products from any of these people. I don't. Um, I don't get any props from anybody. These are just the things that I like, and so I use them, and they make me happy. And you know, some of these things you can just find at, uh, like I said, at Dick Blick. But like this green leaf blueberry, the only way that you would maybe find out about them is by happening upon them. So I just wanted to mention it to to everybody because it's really a good product. Okay, so that's what I'm going with for my um, for my background watercolors. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of white on those orchids because I um, I need to let some of this other watercolor stuff still dry. So I'm going to put the white on the orchids and then I'm going to do a quick background splash and that way the, uh, the other things can dry and I can add my next layer basically on. I'm a big layering fan. Again, I try to strive for the forgiveness factor when it comes to painting. And I find that the best way to do that is by layering. And it's really hard to not get married to your painting early on because you just fall in love with it and you're all excited about it for different reasons. Sometimes just a certain part, sometimes the whole thing. But, but really, if you don't let yourself get too attached to it too quickly, then, um, then we, uh, if you don't get too attached to it too quickly, then you can allow yourself to make changes that you would maybe not make if you think you're totally in love with the way that it looks. Sometimes that can really screw you up though because sometimes I've messed up things where I'm like, shoot, I like the way it looked before. But then sometimes that very mess up causes me to discover something new and different that I wasn't expecting to find. Okay, so I am taking this golden fluid acrylic titanium white, which is one of my favorites. I wet my brush a whole, whole bunch. I poured a little bit out on the plate and I wet my brush a whole, whole bunch and I dipped it in there so that I can um, go over these petals. <clears throat> See, this is what I was talking about though. There are parts that I love, like that is so cool. Do you remember when that Mayan green accidentally got on there? Then I went back over it with the yellow ochre. Like that's such a pretty color. It's so hard for me to cover that up, but it's okay because some of it will peek through and it'll show different depth than the other ones. You just kind of have to go with it. So, um, okay, so I just put a little bit of this white on there. Um, they, there are companies like even that green leaf and blueberry that make a white and um, I love their white and you'll see it uh, when I do the background, but um, it's, it, in my opinion, and maybe somebody who is a watercolorist could probably teach me this, but in my opinion, it's kind of hard to make white go over something that you've already put a color on. Now, I do know this, that if what you put down is still wet, you can, um, you can move it and lift off with it, if you will. Um, so, but I just find that if I come back, again, I'm more of a mixed media artist, and so, I find that if you, uh, if I come with the, over it with the acrylic instead, then it achieves kind of the look that I'm looking for. Um, but also because I'm a layerer, I'm kind of putting a thin coat on first and then I will put on a, a heavier coat. Hey, Ginger. Yes. There is a question from Stu since 77. Mm -hmm. Is there a spe specific method when transitioning from one color to another on your brush okay thank you for asking that yes um i typically okay i have these little yogurt cups these little things that brand's really yummy yogurt anyway what i the real reason i bought it was because i like the cup and they're perfect when you're using small brushes so i always have at least one or sometimes two little pots of water next to me um i have a tendency to keep one that's for darker colors and one that's for lighter colors or like milkier colors. Um, because even if you're rinsing off red off of your brush and you're getting ready to use blue, you're definitely gonna still see some of that red because it's really hard to get it all out. And so um, so I try to keep separate pots for different types of colors that I'm rinsing off of my brushes. But um, yeah, I just rinse, I rinse it off really well in that and swirl it around in that little cup. And then I, um, I have a paper towel right here on the side 
just the good old bounty paper towels that um, that I uh, blot my brush on. I don't dry it completely because I like for there to be some some color, uh, I mean some water on it, obviously. We are water coloring after all. And um, plus it, uh, it helps with like getting more, if you, if you have some water on it, obviously it helps you get the water off, of, I mean the paint off of the little pan. If you just tried to brush this with a dry brush, not much if any is gonna come off. But if it's wet, then it's easy to pick it up. But if it's too wet, then you end up with a puddle. And these little pans, sometimes you can see that the one color bleeds onto the other color, which is how I got that Mayan green on that yellow ochre in that, in that flower originally. But, um, so you just kind of have to be a little bit careful with that. But, uh, so, okay, I was painting white orchids because I really like white orchids, but I just really like the way that this, this, um, ochre looks in the background. And, um, here, and so I am, um, gonna go ahead and leave, um, some of this color on here. I also use my fingers a lot, by the way, that um, so that I can kind of blend things a little bit. And again, maybe a traditional watercolors wouldn't do such a thing, um, but it's what I do. And I don't know, it's what makes me happy. I use my fingers a lot and it's probably my most used tool. Um, I don't know if you can see in this particular little bud, but that one was still a little bit wet when I added that wet water to it. And what's so beautiful about that, but can also sometimes end up being a little bit frustrating, is that you kind of don't have a ton of control over it. And um, sometimes that's really good because it works out in your favor. And other times it kind of messes up your, um, your painting. Um, but, you know, again, roll with the punches. I'm gonna put some more white in this petal because it is just giving me a little bit of a hard time. I like it, but it's giving me a little bit of a hard time. Okay, <clears throat> so that's the white that I'm gonna put on there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the whole background really quick, which is a little bit of a, uh, it's, it's a little bit time consuming, no, not terrible, but it is a little bit of a um, not super interesting process, but we're gonna, um, I have to do it. So this is their white that I was talking about. And um, it's actually a really pretty color and it's hard to see that there's even any color coming off your brush. But when you tape off, like I was saying that we did yesterday, when you tape off um, an area and you go back and you look at that area, that white actually does show up. It's so pretty. It is so, so pretty. It's very, very subdued and beautiful. Um, but the other great thing is also is that you can add then a little bit of um, more color to it by bringing in, introduce a new color. But I'm just gonna, um, so I made kind of a defining line of my table by going in a horizontal motion down here. And now I'm gonna change directions because I wanna show visually that there is um, something different happening and since this is the wall and not the table um i'm going to show it that way but right now what i'm doing is i'm wetting a lot of the background and i am um that way when i bring in some more color it uh it shows up they have this great color that's just called slate and it is so pretty it's very, very gray, but it's a very, it's a really, really mellow. You can make it lighter or darker. And um, I'm adding it on top of the, the quote unquote white that they have. I forget what color white, what shade of white that I have that I bought from them because they make a couple, but I forget which, which color name that one is, but um, for now, I'm doing the white and the gray. <clears throat> if anybody has any questions or uh, need, you know, any advice or anything, like I said, please feel free to ask. I'll do my best to answer. So. 
So just kind of filling in my background. Still, that's what I was saying, that this is kind of a little bit of a tedious uh, little time in this whole thing. <laughs> that's why those quick videos are so nice because it uh, takes away some of the monotony of having to do this for the viewer for sure. But um, okay, I'm gonna pull in a little bit of that gray again. Um, there was a question of uh, where did you get that watercolor tin? That's the green leaf and blueberry, and they're handmade watercolors in Colorado. Um, they're on the western slopes of Colorado, and it's a couple. She's an artist, and he is a chemist, actually. And they make um, they make their own watercolors using all natural products. So they use honey and um, and then the various ground up uh, metals and stones and earth is it something she can order online with yeah that's what i was saying that um you can totally order it online except i will tell you because i've been looking to buy a couple of colors of theirs that i don't have um that their their uh online site right now is kind of on postponed because they've been so busy filling orders that i guess with the quarantine thing that people are you know wanting to paint and all that stuff at home that they, um, their website's temporarily uh, not able to be shopped. But you can sign up for their newsletter, which I recommend. And incidentally, if you go to their Instagram, they have beautiful Instagram posts. They even have these little um, like watercolor, uh, not really kits, but you print off, like they did this whole series of butterflies, and you print off your butterfly on watercolor paper, and then you use their products to, um, to do your piece. And they tell you which ones to use even. I think maybe they send you like a little um, color thing on paper. All right, question what is, do you think watercolor is the most forgiving of the painting mediums? I like to get into painting, but I'm not very good. Um, well, first of all, nobody's good in the beginning because practice makes better. Don't forget that. So. Um, but also, and, and some people are great in the beginning, <laughs> but, um, don't, don't give yourself a hard time because you got to practice to be able to learn how to do it. But, um, uh, I do not think that watercolor is super forgiving. I feel like it's a little bit difficult only because you can tear up your paper so easily. And because once you make a mark, it's super hard to cover it up. Um, but it's super fun and it takes a little bit of patience and if you just limit yourself and every day you try something new then you will um you'll figure it out you'll figure out what works best for you and what doesn't work well for you so on and so forth so if you're even interested in trying i say try it because it's very fun and it's also one of the most easily transportable things for sure trust me i have taken lots of road trips where my art supplies took up more room in the car than my uh, luggage did, which is kind of a hard thing to do. Hmm. But, um, but there's been lots of times. And so then when you can just watercolor, there's so many great little travel journals. And um, like I said, these little, this little tin, it's like the size, I don't know if you can see, but it's actually like the size of an Altoid box. So it's actually really small. And this isn't even their travel one. Like they have a travel one that's even smaller than this. Um, oh, another good source to be able to buy this, which I haven't looked to see if they have any in stock right now, but there is a company called Two Hands Papery. It's Two Hands Papery, P-A-P-E-R, I, I don't know, pa Papery, anyway, E-R-I-E, I believe. And it's in Boulder, Colorado, and it is a gorgeous store. It's a beautiful, beautiful store. And um, they sell so many amazing things. They also have really cool kits. And um, they sell this green leaf and blueberry. That's how I found them, actually. Okay, so this step that I'm doing right now, I'm going to tell you, you have to be a little bit careful because my background is wet, and if you get any of it on your background, you're going to end up um, you're going to end up bleeding into your background. So just be super careful. So what I'm doing right now is working with these um, acrylic inks. So this is actually now acrylic and not just watercolor, which means that once it dries, it's pretty much stationary. You can't, you can't move it. With watercolor, even if you came back, you know, in four years and you wet your watercolor spots, 
you actually can still end up moving it. So you have to, unless, unless you, you know, spray it with the proper stuff, but, um, but these are acrylic inks and the ones that I like are this, um, Dollar Rowney brand. It's their, it's their FW Dollar Rowney. Um, Liquitex makes some too, which are great also. Um, don't get me wrong. It's just, I got started with these Dollar Rownies and, um, that's just what I've always used. Hey, there was a question about, um, once uh, everybody's done with their, um, paintings, can they, uh, post them and tag you in it? I would share. love if you did. I would love it. Love it, love it, love it. Please, 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 if you're gonna, um, if you're gonna, if you're painting along with me, please, I would love to see what you've done because, because that's what makes it fun. And don't be shy. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be anything. Just let, let's just see it and let's talk about it and we can, um, I would love to see what other people are doing because it's just super cool. No. Tag, you just do the at sign Ginger Lee Designs, and it'll tag you in Instagram, right? At sign Ginger Lee Designs, it tags me in Instagram. Yeah, there's some things that I'm still being coached on with this whole Instagram thing before all this quarantine even started. I um, I wasn't even sure how to post a picture of myself, much less be able to um, do any uh, live videos or any videos for that matter, and. It's amazing what you learn when you're forced to. Um, yeah, so yes, that's why I'm saying, please, if you have any questions, ask, ask away because there are gonna be lots of things that I'm not gonna think of because I'm not used to having to think of them. <laughs> um, I am used to teaching though because I have a fantastic group of women that have always helped me with my business and, um, and they have always reassured me that um, that I actually do know how to teach, even though I don't always consider that to be what I've done, that I teach them every day. And I cannot begin to tell you how much I appreciate their encouragement and their being with me all these years, so on and so forth, because they have been true treasures and gifts to me in this whole, my whole career process. And a few guys, I've had a few guys that have helped me along the way, particularly my dad's always helped me. But, and of course my husband and my brother and Kyle and lots of, lots of guys anyway. <laughs> okay. So I use that Dollar Rowney. Um, it's, I use their sap green, S-A-P green. It's a really dark green versus, um, this other green's a little bit lighter, brighter. Um, I like kind of the more muted look of that sap green. Okay. Um, I am going to add a little bit more on this flower because again, that guy was kind of dark and so I feel like it needs to be offset with some white. I'm going to add a little bit more uh, white highlights just in certain spots. And um, at this stage of the game, we're almost done actually. Uh, so yeah. Um, Okay, I'm gonna actually take a few colored pencils now and um, uh, try to see if I can add any color in. Sometimes when it's a little bit too wet, it's kind of tricky to do so because, uh, because it, it carves into the paint. Because, I mean, what you have sitting here is actually paint. So, um, Incidentally, not super big fan of all those little swirls, but they're cute. It works. What are you using for white? Could you say it again? Sure. It's the, um, okay, so somebody just asked, what am I using for white? If I wouldn't mind mentioning again. Um, it's the Golden Fluid Acrylics and the Titanium White. They make various shades of white, but the Titanium is my favorite. Um, it is, it's got a pretty intense opacity that it covers up things well. There's these black dashes when you buy paint bottles like this. And basically what that shows is they put a little swipe of the paint that's in the bottle over those black dashes. And what that shows you is how opaque or transparent the paint is. So sometimes there will be, um, like see this one, you can see the black dashes more than on this one. That's because this is way more transparent than this is. So it's a titanium white. I keep it in a little china paper plate, fancy palette. And I, um, I just wet my brush a little bit because I don't want it to be super concentrated. Um, and so I just wet my brush a little bit and blot it on where I want it to go. Um, 
Yeah, so, so far all that I've used are those uh, green leaf and blueberry paint tin, um, my colored pencils, which uh, I have a variety, Derwent, Faber-Castle, and Caran d'Ache, and then that Dowler Rowney FW acrylic inks, which it's acrylic, so again, it's gonna, it's gonna stay put, but it's an ink, so it's even thinner than those fluid acrylics, but they are able to maintain the intense pigments. You saw when I put this on that it completely changed some of that green earth that I had originally put on. Um, so, and then like I said, I kind of have a tendency to go back and uh, add more um, color here and there with uh, colored pencils. Um, I particularly love dark indigo. It's one of my very favorite, but... Um, and that's just to add a little bit more depth here and there. Not a bunch, just some. She said that she started adding the water. That was the thing she was missing. It makes a big difference, doesn't it? Oh, good. Oh, on the colored pencils? On the white. Oh, on the white. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Because if you do straight up white, it's going to cover everything you're doing. It's super thick. Um, it's not that it's super thick. It's that it's compared to the watercolors, it's very opaque and so as a result it can cover up a lot and then you end up kind of with a milky mess sorry um yeah let's see oh yes actually somebody asked about okay i slaughter this name but it's i believe you say it gauche um and it is uh i always get it confused if it's gauche or gauche but it's gauche i believe Yes, I discovered those a couple of months ago, and I've been using actually the Liquitex brand of Gauche. Somebody has another favorite brand, please let me know because I'm open for any suggestions. But um, this is a Liquitex Gauche, and um, dang, I can't remember if it's Gauche or Gauche. It's driving me crazy now, but anyway. <laughs> um, it, these little paint bottles, incidentally, are pretty good because they've got this little nozzle on the top and so you can squeeze it out pretty easily and they're there i like these little paint bottles they do get some around the lip that ends up in that little cap but um i still end up again because i use my finger so much i usually wipe it off and use it um they dry matte they're um they can be very much opaque they cut in that they cover up other things but um they blend really well with like uh with water and also with the watercolor pencils, they blend really well with the watercolor pencils. I did um, my whole little Easter Bunny series, I used a lot of gauche on. And, um, and I really enjoyed using that product though. And it comes in a pretty decent variety of colors. And that's the liquid gauche. I guess you can get the dry gauche or the liquid gauche. Or, um, G W A S H pronounced. Okay, gosh. That's right, it's like squash, but it's gosh gouache gouache thank you very much for correcting me <laughs> my mom even told me that and i forgot that that's what she said but yes it is it's like it's like squash but with a g in front instead okay so i'm i'm going back right now with my colored pencils again just to kind of hit some little highlights and um uh this i incidentally i love the way that this whole little section came out so i'm really not going to mess with that very much and i do like the way that the white is on top of these colors there um those have worked out uh very nicely that i i don't want to mess with it um but i'm just adding a little bit of highlights here and there of some of these colors that you know for whatever reason one thing or another i feel like they need a little bit more depth in this in this original, like in the stock, the base of the stock. Um, okay, so I just colored, my plant is here. I put these dark lines here to show that that's kind of in the back and this leaf is leaning over the plant. So because of that, I felt like in the front and to the right, I needed some more darkness just to kind of give it some balance. But I also wanted to work with the rest of its little situation over here. So I didn't want to just do the darkness there. I also don't want to color the whole thing because now all of a sudden you're just making a whole new color again. And now you got to figure out how to highlight different things. But um, that's kind of the technique that I use for uh, making depth on a piece. Um, but yeah, we're, I'm, I'm actually almost done. So if anybody has any kind of questions that they want to ask, Please, again, feel free. Um, I hope that this has been fun and a help. As nervous as I was, I have to admit that it, um, 
it kind of came natural for me as long as I know that everybody's um, not sitting at home laughing at me. And if you're laughing at me, it's okay because I am always the first one to point out when I trip on the sidewalk when I'm walking down the street. So it's okay if you laughed at me a little bit because I will, I'm certain laugh at myself when I see the video later. Um, I'm good with that. Um, I, there's a couple of things that you can still kind of see this lime green and by that Mayan green, it's a little bit too intense of a color transition. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of blend some of this color pencil in and, and re-wet that. Um, There's another question. Okay, what's up? Do Somebody you, has a question. Do you have, do you have to spray it with anything to make it set? Okay, you can spray it with things to make it set. Um, I will have to text that, or sorry, post that later because I'll need to find some products. I have not, um, uh, on watercolors again, because I'm such a new watercolor artist, on water, or like in the more traditional sense, because I've used watercolor pencils a lot, but I use them non-traditionally. Um, but in the traditional sense, I've never uh, had to figure out what to spray to make it set, but I certainly will do some research. Um, my mom, I have a handy dandy uh, mom who is a, an art teacher and um, went to college in art uh, and has worked a lot with watercolors. Um, uh, she will probably be able to give me some suggestions. I'm just kind of identifying this table a little bit more that I was working with because I like how faint that, that's that purple ochre that I was saying. See how it's almost like a, a burnt purple. It's so beautiful. It's like an aubergine color, almost like an eggplant -y color. But I wanted it to pop a little bit more, so I went on ahead and put not a full line, but just a couple little dashes here and there. Same on this side, I kind of sketched it a little bit. Um, it, watercolor pencils, again, you can leave them not and just leave it like that, or you can come back with some water and it will intensify the color. But that's not what I want in this section. I want it to be, uh, I want it to be kind of more bold the way that it is. So some people come back with pens and whatnot, which is a great idea too, but. Honestly, I don't really trust myself enough to do that yet. On the fix it. The fixative? Yeah, it's a one of somebody posted uh, Spectra Fix Spray. Fixative. Okay. Okay. Um, supposed to be really good. Well, and let me show you this because. Um, okay, the, I actually when I paint when I use watercolor pencils again because I don't use them in the traditional way. I use them a lot in abstracts and whatnot. I actually, uh, you know, I need to deal with that setting because if somebody bought one of my paintings and accidentally sprayed uh, dust cleaner or something on it, I don't want them to end up with a painting that then ends up losing some of the color or drips down the front of it or something. So I actually use this um, Grumbacher Final Fixative and it's their matte one. So it's matte Final Fixative. It has a pretty intense odor, so you're gonna wanna use it outside for sure. But it's for pastels, charcoal, and pencil. And so even though watercolors, it, it, you can activate it by adding water to it, whereas these other things really, you don't activate it except that they can smear like chalk almost, it's particularly these first two, can smear like chalk, pencil just smears and smudges if you rub it the wrong way, depending on what type of pencil you use. So I kind of felt like this is similar to the watercolor pencils. And um, I mean, those items are similar to the watercolor pencils. So this is what I spray it with to make sure that it doesn't move. It will brighten those colors, I'll tell you. So you wanna make sure that if you work on a painting and you like exactly the color of watercolor pencil you just used, same with pastels. You like exactly the color that you used, you need to um, make sure to keep in mind that it will change your colors um, because it, it ends up brightening the color. Okay, so I just have a few more minutes. Um, I'm gonna do this last step. So this is me embracing the um, kind of idea and quilting that they put a humility square in everything and that whole like not trying to strive for the very perfect. Um, there, I don't know what the tradition is and I tried looking this up. I'm gonna have to do some more research again when I find out, I'll let y'all know. But um, that they kind of, people kind of, there. it's been a tradition to kind of speckle watercolor paintings. And the first few I did, I didn't do it. And then I started doing it, I really like it. Again, I wet my brush a whole, whole bunch. I have some of that titanium white. You just take another utensil and you just kind of splatter it like such. Some people use um, toothbrushes to uh, flick it almost, 
but I have found most success with this. And don't overkill it, but it definitely adds a little something to it. And then um, just for now, until it's completely dry, I just sign with a regular old pencil 